Diana of Cauldron and Craft. In today's video, I'm gonna do a mid-fall garden update, which it might seem like a weird time to do a garden update because it is deep into fall. We are well on our way to the winter solstice and we're probably also in the holiday spirit, but there, if you live in a milder climate like I do, there's a lot of things that you can be doing at this time of year. And one of the things that I am actually good at when it comes to gardening is getting things to come back year after year. So I found the things that either can be left outside during the winter time where I live in zone seven or how to save them so that they can, so they make it through the winter and they will come back next year. So this video is gonna be a little bit of a hodgepodge of things that I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. It's not gonna be like, I did this today, the weekend after Thanksgiving, is things that I've done actually over the last couple of weeks that I just kind of filmed here and there. And I'm the, the thing I'm most excited about is the greenhouse. And I feel a little silly because I got it with the intention of keeping my aloe over winter because it's gotten really big and I don't really have the space inside. However, what I didn't think through was the heating aspect and how I'd actually keep it warm throughout the winter. I just kind of somehow in my head thought, if I get a greenhouse, it's gonna keep my aloe warm. And that has not been the case. And I'm still working through that. For example, it's 60 degrees outside and it's 60 degrees in the greenhouse, which is fine today, but when it gets down in the 20s again in the next few nights coming up, that's gonna be a problem. And I'm still working through trying and trying to figure out how to keep it warm. So I would also say that this time of year is really good for planning for the future. So if there are things that you wanna get started, like herbs that are that are perennial in your area, meaning they'll come back year after year and, they, and they're hardy in your area, it's a good time to plant those. For example, I have echinacea seeds that I've been meaning to plant and echinacea is one of those plants that will keep coming back year after year where I live, but it's a good time now to sow them because they that's how the, the seeds natural life cycle would be if they just grew in the wild. So the plant releases its seeds, they fall into the ground, those seeds sit there over winter and they bloom in the spring. And so if you wanna mimic that type of cycle in your garden, you could plant things now that will come back in the spring. It's also a great time to plant bulbs of any kind. So if you have flower bulbs like tulips or dahlias, those types of things must be planted in the winter because they have to be cold stratified, meaning they have to endure those really cold temperatures in order to grow in the spring and they'll be the first things to grow come springtime. But also garlic is another thing that you can grow now. You plant it now and then it grows, it starts you know, sprouting in the spring and, and then you harvest it in the summer. So I've tried to grow garlic in the past and I wasn't successful, And I, but I, I got a lot of really good advice in like Facebook groups and I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. So I think I know what I did wrong. So I'm gonna give garlic another try just because I have the dirt, I have the pots, I have the straw, like I already had everything. It didn't really cost me anything to try again. So I'm giving it another shot. And the greenhouse is actually gonna help with the garlic because while it needs cold over winter to grow properly, being in containers means it could be potentially exposed to temperatures that are too cold, but butting them up against the greenhouse will help keep the, the temperature a little bit warmer so they're not completely exposed because last time I did them I had them in the front yard and they were just completely out there and I think that contributed to the lack of success the last time so I'm keeping my fingers crossed the only thing that will be disappointing is if it doesn't grow then I have like six pots taken up with this that will have to just stay that way until the summer until I figure out if they've grown or not so but that's part of gardening is just trying things and seeing if it works and learning from your mistakes and every year at the very least you get knowledge that you can then you know put to use for the next year if you want to try again and so i take all of these types of things as learning experiences um, but let's get started now that we've had a hard freeze here in zone 7b uh, I think the temperatures in the last two nights have gotten into the 20s. It's time to cut down my lemongrass and save it for next year. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna start by putting on 
my gardening gloves because this grass is kind of um, can be kind of spiky and can irritate the skin even though it's like basically almost dead. So I'm going to start by cutting the actual grass. So now I'm going to dig down and pull out these individual blades of grass that we can then put in water and they'll grow roots for next year. So I'm using my, I'm using my spade trowel to kind of like cut into the root ball. I'm actually going to use a knife to keep cutting this. Alright. So here we have a blade that has roots attached. Now we can use the cut grass that we just cut from the plants to mulch our other plants that can stay in the pots over winter, but just need a little bit of extra cover. So now I'm going to rinse off the excess dirt and pull off the extra leaves on the outside of the blades of grass. I didn't do that last year and they really got funky over winter. So we want to make sure it's down to just the bare, bare blade and the roots. So I've now cleaned each blade as best I could and put it into jars. And this is one time that I would recommend using tap water because of the chlorine content. It will actually help keep it from getting moldy. I am going to watch these really closely to make sure they don't start getting moldy or slimy. Because um, that happened to me last year when I didn't pull off those that extra like dried up stem on the outside. I just left kind of the green stem. And I also have a little pothos leaf that didn't die in the freeze that I didn't, I wasn't able to save the rest of the plant. So definitely gotta stay better on top of it next time. I took out about half of the pot of dirt and because it was used potting soil so I want to refresh it a little bit so I'm adding some compost and some sand to kind of refresh the nutrients a little bit. 
I'm also gonna add a little bit of fertilizer. And like literally a little bit. And now I'm gonna add it back to the pot. I'm gonna leave a good bit of room at the top of the pot because we're gonna mulch really heavily. So now I'm gonna do that for the rest of the containers that I plan to use for planting. Now that I have my pots prepared, I'm going to place the garlic in there. You wanna pop out the cloves, but don't peel them. We're gonna stick them in the dirt, pointy side up. I'm gonna do about four to a pot. fill the pot the rest of the way up with straw to help to mulch them and help protect them throughout the winter. Now that I have the pots finished and mulched, I'm going to place them up against the greenhouse and kind of overlapping this little bit of lip that hangs down so they can help keep it steady when it's windy and also so they can get the residual warmth from the greenhouse. So this is my little greenhouse that I have put up where my trellis was. You can see the bamboo back there. Um, this is the southern facing side of my porch. And the primary reason I bought this right now is because I need a place to put my aloe through the winter. And I'm working on getting this to where it will keep a warm enough temp throughout the night. We had a, really, a lot of really cold nights when I first put it up and it wasn't keeping temp very well. I did get a heat lamp but that actually didn't do that actually didn't do that good of a job keeping it warm it would barely keep the temp from dropping um, so some of the things I've done I'm, that I'm I've done that I'm still working on is I've added pots empty pots on either side over here and over here and I've added the the straw bale in the middle at, to act as heat sinks and hold the heat throughout the day so as you can see the temperature right now is like in the 60s which that's what it is outside too because I've had it open um, and I also have a digital thermometer that I'm using to watch the temp especially at night and we have a lot of nights coming up that aren't that cold so I think I'm going to go ahead and move my aloe plants in here and then I'm really excited because this is really going to help me in the springtime with being able to put things out here to start sprouting like on these shelves here and here. all the baby aloe that I pulled off of those when I refreshed their soil. And I'm going to put these in here too. And as the sun shines through facing this side throughout the afternoon, 
it will heat it up and hopefully we'll start being able to maintain the, the temperature throughout the night. I'd love to hear in the comments what you're going to be planting this fall or if you're doing anything this fall to prepare for next spring's gardening. Um, so let me know in the comments and thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.